Hello and welcome back to Steven Data. Today, in this video, we are going to talk about two simple but extremely important topics probability mass function and cumulative distribution function. What I mean by simple but important is you will see that the rules and the formulas these two have are so simple to catch but do not let the simplicity conceal their important applications because in later videos we are going to get familiar with probability distributions and to understand them completely we must know these two functions okay I think I could have conveyed the importance of these two terms now let's dive into the video to see what we can get from it about the terms Many physical systems can be modeled by the same or similar random experiments and random variables. The distribution of the random variables involved in each of these common systems can be analyzed and the results can be used in different applications and examples. In fact, random variables are so important in random experiments that sometimes we essentially ignore the original sample space of the experiment and focus on the probability distribution of the random variable. On the other side, the probability distribution of a random variable called x is a description of the probabilities associated with the possible values of x. For a specifically a discrete random variable, the distribution is often specified by just a list of the possible values along with the probability of each. For other cases, probabilities are expressed in terms of formula that is called the mass probability function that I will talk about after the following example. Suppose that there is a chance that a bit transmitted through a digital transmission channel is received in error. Let x equal the number of bits in error in the next 4 bits transmitted. The possible values for x are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Based on a model for the errors that is presented in the following section, probabilities for these values will be determined. Suppose that the probability of x equals 0 is equal to 0 0.6561, the probability of x equals 1 is equal to 0 0.2916, the probability of x equals 2 is equal to 0 0.0486, the probability of x equals 3 is equal to 0 0.0036, and finally, the probability of x equals 4 is equal to 0.0001. The probability distribution of x is specified by the possible values along with the probability of each, as I mentioned. A graphical description of the probability distribution of x is shown in this figure. Now, suppose that a loading on a long, thin beam places mass only at discrete points. The loading can be described by a function that specifies the mass at each of the discrete points. Similarly, for a discrete random variable called x, its distribution can be described by a function that specifies the probability at each of the possible discrete values for x and that function is called the probability mass function which is described like this for a discrete random variable x with possible values x1 x2 x3 up to x sub n a probability mass function is a function such that f of xi is always greater than or equal to zero the summation from i equals 1 to n of the f of x sub i is always equal to 1. And finally, the f of x sub i is equal to the probability of x equals x sub i. And as you can see for the bits in error in the last example, the probabilities are bigger than or equal to 0 and their summation equals 1. Now, to understand the probability mass function better, let's see another example. Let 
The random variable x denotes the number of semiconductor wafers that need to be analyzed in order to detect a large particle of contamination. Assume that the probability that a wafer contains a large particle is 0.01 and wafers are independent. We are interested in the probability distribution of x. Let P denote a wafer in which a large particle is present and let A denote a wafer in which it is absent. The sample space of the experiment is infinite and it can be represented as all possible sequences that start with A string of A and end with P. That is, S contains P, AP, AAP, AAAP, and so forth. Now, consider a few special cases. The probability of x equals 1 is equal to the probability of p that is equal to 0.01. Also, using the independence assumption, we have the probability of x equals to is equal to the probability of a p that is equal to 0.99 times 0.01 that is equal to 0.0099. And this pattern leads to a general formula that is the probability of capital X is equal to X is equal to 0.99 to the power of X minus 1 times 0.01. Describing the probabilities associated with X in terms of this formula is a simple method to define the distribution of X in this example. And we can clearly see that the probability distribution function meets our mentioned conditions. Now, it's time to get familiar with the cumulative distribution function. An alternate method for describing a random variable's probability distribution is with cumulative probabilities, such as the probability of capital X is less than or equal to X. Furthermore, cumulative probabilities can be used to find the probability mass function of a discrete random variable. But before giving the formal definition of the cumulative distribution function, let's get familiar with cumulative probability by the following example. In the digital channel example, we might be interested in the probability that three or fewer bits are in error. This question can be expressed as the probability of x is less than or equal to 3. The event that x is less than or equal to 3 is the union of the events x is equal to 0, x equals 1, x equals 2, and x equals 3. Clearly, these four events are mutually exclusive. Therefore, the probability of x is less than or equal to 3 equals the probability of x equals 0 plus the probability of x equals 1 plus the probability of x equals 2 plus the probability of x equals 3 and this summation is equal to 0 0.6561 plus 0 0.2916 plus 0 0.2916 0.0486 plus 0 0.0036 and that is equal to 0 0.9999. In general, for any discrete random variable with possible values x1, x2 up to x sub n, the events x equals x1, x equals x2 up to x equals x sub n are mutually exclusive. Therefore, the probability of capital X is less than or equal to X equals the summation from X sub i is less than or equal to X of the probability of X equals X sub i. And this leads to the following definition. The cumulative distribution function of a discrete random variable called X denoted as this and it is equal to the formula I just talked about. But remember this point, for a discrete random variable called x, the f of x satisfies the following properties. First, the f of x is equal to or between 0 and 1. And then, if x is less than or equal to y, then the f of x is less than or equal to f of y. But 
before wrapping up the video, let's see a simple example of the cumulative distribution function. Suppose that x is a random variable associated with rolling a fair six-sided die. We are interested in determining the cumulative distribution function of x. We can see that if k equals 1 to 6, the probability distribution function of x equals 1 over 6. Thus, if we want to calculate the cumulative distribution function of x, we can easily do it by summing these probabilities sequentially. And it can be summarized as follows. The probability of x is less than or equal to 1 equals 1 over 6. The probability of x is less than or equal to 2 is 2 over 6. The probability of x is less than or equal to 3 equals 3 over 6. The probability of x is less than or equal to 4 equals 4 over 6. The probability of x is less than or equal to 5 equals 5 over 6. And finally, the probability of x is less than or equal to 6 equals 6 over 6 that is equal to 1. Now it's time to wrap up the video by reviewing what we have learned so far. First, we saw that the probability distribution of a random variable called x is a description of the probabilities associated with the possible values of x. Then we saw that we have two ways to show the probability distribution of a random variable. Using probability mass function that says for a discrete random variable called x with possible values x1, x2, up to x sub n, a probability mass function is a function such that meets these three conditions. And as another way, using the cumulative distribution function that says the cumulative distribution function of a discrete random variable called x is denoted as this and it is equal to the summation from x sub i is less than or equal to x of the probability mass function of x sub i. But remember this point, for a discrete random variable, the CDF must satisfy the following properties. And that is done. Congratulations. Now you know some information about the components of the probability distribution and you are ready to get familiar with the famous ones. At last, if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you are interested in probability, statistics, and data science topics, please consider subscribing to this channel. By the way, if you have a question about this subject, and anything related to the fields I mentioned, comment it down in the comment section. I will answer them as soon as possible. I hope this video helps you a lot and until the next video, happy learning.